I continue to hold out against Mr. McCarthy for a number of reasons, and my suggestion to the people who are advocating to, to go ahead and change their vote for him in order to get the rule changes was, get your rule changes first. There's two aspects of that. You, you get, have to get the rule changes through the whole body, if, so that's a vote. And the second thing is, is he going to adhere to the rule changes because this body is famous for waiving rule changes? There were things that were not secure yet. Um, there were threats from more moderate Republicans that they were going to vote against the rules package after uh, the speaker was named. That was not very encouraging for us to move forward. We didn't feel like we had had this in the bag just yet. When we moved to the 14th vote, uh, I anticipated, because we had been very closely uh, communicating, very closely, very tight, I thought that um, it probably was going to wrap up as, during the 14th vote. It's all set on the 14th vote. It's supposed to happen, and it doesn't. They're off by just one vote. What do you have? Everything explodes again. You have this flurry of activity. There was uh, some animated uh, engagements there on the House floor. And what does that mean? Uh, well, let's just postpone it to the next week. There was going to be a motion to adjourn, and uh, some of us were of the belief that we ought to keep going and finish the job. The vote was called, the motion to adjourn was going, but there was still a debate being had among some of my colleagues who had yet held out their vote. And I was at the back with, the, with four of us, and we just said, look, there's nothing left to be gained. It's now time to go forward, and, and we did. And that's why we voted present. I had a card down there ready to switch my vote from a yes to adjourn, which I didn't think we should do, and I was talking to Kevin's team and others, and I said, guys, I'm about to flip it to a no. I had my red card filled out. And then one of the members who had been holding out came out and said, I think we've got an agreement that we'll vote by present. Well, suddenly then Kevin and everybody were running around saying, whoa, 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 go down and change your vote. We want to not adjourn so we can continue to do this. And I think he was already down there and dropped a red card off and uh, switched my vote and then got out of the way. And then we flipped it and then the rest is history. That gave uh, McCarthy enough. That was easy, huh? <laughs> I never thought we'd get up here. And without question, the concessions weakened the speakership and empowered individual members. I like some of those, by the way. Let me say this. I think I had too much power as speaker. Oh, really? I really do. Congress never meant to be a dictatorship of any speaker because each of us has diverse experiences, represent diverse district, and bring a lot to the table. And I think if we truly represent the people, each of us has to be able to have an input. And already we've seen for the first time in years amendments offered on the House floor and legislation. Still a lot of progress to be made, but we have probably the best opportunity we've had in many, many years to actually work for the American people. We're very proud of the stand that we took in this speaker race to change the rules and the procedures, the policies that will be coming to the House floor, and even the personnel. We have conservatives on the Rules Committee. I see every bill, I see every amendment, and we can make changes. Three of us were on there, Chip Roy, Thomas Massey, and me. I was added to the House Rules Committee as a result of, of what happened in the, the speaker's debate. I didn't set out to do it, um, but I was asked to do it both by the speaker and by my compatriots in the 20. There was just no way that we were gonna see conservatives on the Rules Committee because the Rules Committee actually keeps structure in terms of what gets voted on, what does not get voted on. If you had asked me to bet uh, $5 of your money uh, 10 years ago, uh, believing that I would see it, I'd say that's a bad bet. The Rules Committee hasn't been important for about 60 years because it's also understood for the last 60 years that it would be a rubber stamp for the Speaker of the House. The composition is that there are uh, nine members of the majority and four members of the minority. It's very lopsided. It always turns out for the Speaker. We got three seats on that committee. Now do the math. You've got uh, nine, take away three is six. If the leadership wants to ram an agenda through without considering the three and says, we're not gonna talk to you, they've got six votes. Well, the Democrats always vote no. So there's four reflexive no's and three join them. So now it's six to seven. Every bill before it goes to the floor has to go through the Rules Committee. Every amendment before it comes to the floor for a vote has to go through the Rules Committee. The amount of time we're gonna debate the bill is decided by the Rules Committee, and it's already changed the, the way this place works.